Here's hood amplifier number five assembled, uh, not counting these three devices. Everything went together well. All the parts were in the kit. I have nothing left over. I predicted some interference here and here. And there is, these two are shoved up each against each other pretty tight. Actually, they're sort of leaning, the, you know. And the access hole is covered by this capacitor here and here. The silk screening shows a corner missing or cut off of each one of these capacitors. I can't see it because I've installed the capacitors, but I can find no identifying corresponding marks on the capacitors. And this capacitor is not shown with a corner missing. You cannot install this backwards because this spacing is 10 millimeters, while this one and this one is 7.5 millimeters. No surprises. Oh, I didn't install the LED. Why didn't I do that? I found it. The LED installs here. That's here on the drawing. And the long lead, as always, is positive. Okay, so that lead is positive. This gold uh, flashing is very easy to solder to. I like that. I need to find out what sort of heat sink I'm going to use before I install these devices. As I said earlier, this is a two mirror image boards. This is the board I like to, do, to build for no good reason. One or the other would have been fine. I've fully populated this board now, including the heat sink and the three terminal devices. And when I did the drawing, I used this board. And I thought the designer must have been drunk when he assigned parts numbers. Because they certainly didn't make any sense. Now I see some hint in what's going on. For example, this is D1. Most of the part uh, values and, and nomenclature are covered up. But you can see this is D1 if you look close. This is D2. This is VT7. It's the pass transistor for the power supply. This is VT8. VT5. VT6. VT1. VT2. You can barely see it. P5. This is P6. And so on. So you must have split the part callouts between these two boards. I'm not sure that everything works that way. This is C7 and C8. No. This is C8 and 9. C8 and C9. This is C7 and C6. My drawing works for this board. My bill of material works for this board. The schematic works for both boards, but the parts call out on the schematic, not the values, but the call outs, C1, C2, whatever, are for this board only. I don't see any reason to do two bill of materials and two schematics and two of everything. And I don't know which one of these would be designated left and right. So it's just that they're mirror images of each other. Keep that in mind if you're if you're trying to lay out this board. This is the hood amplifier number five. And one of the 
characteristics of the hood amplifier is the ability to adjust current. Most of the current flows through here. Uh, incidental amounts flow through these two transistors. So normally the current is measured from the power supply and this is adjusted to some suitable value. I tend to set it around one amp. But with this board I can't measure that current anywhere. I mean, there's no place I can insert an ammeter short of cutting a trace. So what I've elected to do is supply this with a DC power supply. Uh, my power supply has an ammeter on it. I don't really trust using an AC ammeter in series with an AC source to set the current. Right now I'm supplying 16 volts of DC here. We'll get back to the actual numbers in a minute. But on my analog meter it says 16 volts. And I've adjusted this for a total power supply draw of about 1.1 amp. 1.05 amps. The other characteristics of the hood amplifier is that this point is set to 50% of the voltage. Not the voltage here, but the voltage here. And I've done that by adjusting this potentiometer. We'll take a look at the actual measured voltages. You'll have to trust me, I'm going to use my bench meter and you won't be able to see that. I'm going to hook up the power supply so it's under load. Sixteen point four volts. That's sixteen point four volts here to here. Now we've got some diode drops before we get to here. Actually, two of them. So I'm going to measure this point, which is by my nomenclature VCC. And that reads 14.8 volts. We have about a volt and a half drop. between here and here. Now, I'll read this voltage again just to make sure. Fourteen point eight. Go to the other side of the regulator and read the actual power supply voltage to the amplifier. And that's 12.3 volts. I'll measure the voltage at the crossover point. 6.2 volts. Published in the uh, Wireless World 1969 article were three photographs of an oscilloscope. This is a 50 hertz square wave input and this is the output of the amplifier. This is a 50 kilohertz square wave input and this is the output of the amplifier. In all the uh, photos of my oscilloscope this will be the input, this will be the output. Right now the input is a square wave at 5 kilohertz and this is the output at 5 kilohertz. The input voltage is about 310 millivolts. The output voltage is about 
10.4 volts. The output is terminated in an 8 ohm resistor. So here we are at about 12 volts, about 1 amp. We're looking at, we'll go and look at 50 hertz now. This is a 50 hertz square wave. And this is a 50 hertz output signal. Actually, this looks much better than JLH's output. His output seems uniform, while this output has a little slope in it. But this is pretty good compared to the original. Our other choice is 50 kilohertz. There's 50 kilohertz output. It's not nearly as nice as the JLH output, nor is it as nice as some of the previous JLH amplifiers. We'll look at a uh, 1000 hertz. There's a 1000 hertz input. 1000 hertz output looks just fine. 500. 500 looks just fine. 10 kilohertz looks pretty nice. 20. Now we're seeing some rounding on this edge here. A little tiny bit here, that's no sin. This is at worst. Now with 16 volts of input and 1 amp of current, well, 1.2 amps of current, you know, we're less than 20 watts of dis dissipation here. And I can not comfortably touch this, but it's, according to this, the body of the transistor is at 43 degrees C. The heat sink is at 41 degrees C. The voltage regulating transistor is at 44 C. And the two, that one's at uh, 46, 45. So these two are the amplifier transistors. They're a little hotter than this, which makes sense. This is only dissipating about 2 volts, and these are dissipating 6 volts. I have 1 amp. I'm slightly more than 1 amp. I think this is worthwhile me getting a transformer out. And in part 3 of this series, I'll replace this DC supply with an AC supply. The drawing has a date and the bill of material has a date. These will be published at the uh, link below and you need to make sure that you at least check if you're using a bill of material or a schematic of mine, check my website to make sure the date is current. I do make mistakes on these, and I try to correct them from time to time. Watch on the oscilloscope as I power it up. That's one kilohertz. It dies rather quickly but it grows rather slowly. Big capacitors.